Thanks for having us here. It's been a blessing. Um, I also want to thank the brethren here for those beautiful letters you wrote to us. It really touched my heart more than I could say. Um, Brother James's text is um, Matthew sixteen fifteen. And it says, he said to them, Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Who we say Jesus is, is so important. It's the foundation of everything we believe. Amen. It's what we anchor ourselves to. Yes. Um, the following verse uh, Matthew 16, 16 says, Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The saying is so deep, and it causes me to ask that question to myself. Who do I believe that Jesus is? And am I so certain about who he is in my life that nothing can shake me, and I'm solid in my belief in, in Jesus? Um, I have a, uh, as I did my research, I have, uh, I found this common belief that people in the world have about Jesus. And basically, the statement said that Christians are foolish for believing that, that Jesus is actually God. That we would be happier and better off in our life if we would put aside these childish fables and enjoy life because we ourselves are gods. Um, as, I, as I read this, this concept, I guess you'd say, I said to myself, what utter hopelessness to believe that true fulfillment can be found in yourself. But it's also good to be challenged in our faith because when someone asks, who do you think Jesus is? We want a solid answer. To come from us. Um, there are many aspects about Jesus that affirm him as Christ in my mind. But here is just two that I, that I feel make Jesus stand alone. Compared to any other religion, God, or, or human reasoning. The first one is redemption. Man left to himself creates complete wickedness and depravity. As we can see evidenced by the world we live in and also what God says in Genesis 6 5 the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart were evil continually and also Jeremiah 17 9 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick and then Romans 3 23 for all sin and fall short of the glory of God no matter what people claim they don't need a God or, or they don't need Jesus, that they're happy with life being their own kind of God. You look at the world and you can see that this is not true because there's so many beliefs, there's so many religions that people try to connect to some sort of a God. They want to appease the need of having a God because we are created in God's image, and that's why people long for that. I like the saying that says there's a God-shaped hole in all of us that only God can fill. Um, Hinduism has 330 million gods, and these gods require your best um, to get anything from them. I heard of a story of a woman who had two sons. One son was very sick and the other was perfectly healthy and the lady threw her healthy son into the river to the crocodile god hoping that he would save her sick son. Buddhism says that every life you live you try your very best to do it right and if you don't do it right you come back again until you get it right. And Islam believes that 
to get to heaven, your good deeds better outweigh your bad deeds. But Jesus. He is superior. No other God sacrificed so much to redeem my soul. To save me from death. And I know that death because it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus redeems by his own blood. Jesus is the only one who offers redemption. Amen. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. Yes. First Corinthians 1, 30, And because of him, you are in Christ, yeah. Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Mm -hmm. People long for redemption. Mm -hmm. Religions long for it but they can't attain it because the only way you can get redemption is through Jesus Christ. Amen. The second area where Jesus is far superior and is truly only something that Christ can do is transformation. No other God can cause or any other religion can cause transformation of our wicked flesh like Jesus can. I think the prodigal son in rags, eating pig slop. And that was my life before Jesus came and changed it. It's Jesus who shows us our need for transformation. It's not until we experience the consequences of living a life of sin that we long for the transformation that Jesus offers. I'm sorry I'm so emotional. It's just, this is something that's just so real to me and just blessed me so much. Amen. And it's not till guilt overwhelms us that we seek the purity of Christ. Um, 1 Corinthians 6 11 says, I love this that Paul says this because it gives you hope. It says, And such were some of you, but you were washed. Yeah. sanctified and justified Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit Amen. of God. Mm -hmm. And one other um, example of uh, transformation that I, I love, and it's kind of humorous in a way, but in Philemon 1, um, Paul says, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Imprisonment. Formerly he was useless mm -hmm. to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. And I love that because in Jesus, before we were useless, yeah. and Jesus makes us useful. Amen. I can see the power of Jesus in my own life, and also in others, because you know people's story. And everything else seems so dull in comparison to what Jesus has done and the mighty works he completes in our lives. Amazing. No one else has taken such a concern or initiative in our spiritual state like Jesus has. Amen. Sacrificing so much to offer me redemption and, transformed, and a transformed life. And that's why Jesus is Christ to me. Who do you say that Jesus is? I wanted to start off uh, kind of echoing what Emily said at the beginning about the letters and the prayers that we had received uh, from your brother. And, and uh, it is very much appreciated and very much got to see uh, real love in those letters. So. I wanted to personally thank you also for each one of those, for those and, and for your prayers. I 
the theme, divine interrogation. Me, like other brethren, when I first thought of interrogation, <laughs> you thought of, I thought of that dark room also with the little light and the guy in your face asking you all these questions and pounding on the table and, and stuff like that. But then as I continued to think about it, it's a divine yeah. interrogation. Yeah. And so in a divine interrogation, it's questions that have a purpose. Amen. Yeah. So the question that I, will, that I am going to be talking about is, who do you say that I am? Found in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 15. And I'm going to go ahead and, and read it once more again. But I'm going to start in verse number 13. And it says, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked, to, he asked his disciples, who do you say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, and or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Yeah. And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Amen. When a question is asked, an answer is, in, is expected. That's right. You know, when you ask your children or when I ask my children a question, a lot of times I get this. I don't know. <laughs> That's unacceptable yeah. for the questions that God gives and asks us. Yeah. We cannot shrug our shoulders and say, I don't know, to these questions that we're considering um, here, if we don't know, then we need to find out. Right. Amen. Mm. Yeah. An answer is expected. Mm -hmm. This question, along with the ones that we are consi have considered and are considering and are going to consider, these are important questions because, for example, the one that we're considering right now, who do you say that I am? This is an important question because if we get this, if we answer this question wrong, yeah. then everything after that's going to be wrong and off track yeah. because this is where it starts. Yeah. And it starts with, with Jesus. If we answer this question wrong, then we're, we set off on a road that leads away from God, not to God. If the question to this answer is not like Peter's, you are the Christ, if it is something else that, that is not found in scriptures concerning Christ, then it's leading us away from Christ. And um, I appreciate, and it's a challenge, but I appreciate what uh, Brother Given has said many times, you can't be wrong about Jesus. And I, and I love that because every time I hear that, it challenges me because I don't want to be wrong about yeah. Jesus. Amen. We can't be wrong about him because he is the chief cornerstone. Everything starts and is built upon him. If we are, if we are wrong at that point, then our house is going to be crooked, it's going to look terrible, and it's going to fall one day. And so we cannot be wrong. He is our sure foundation. Yeah. If we are wrong about who he is, then our, then our house will eventually fall someday that we are striving to build because it is not built upon Jesus Christ. There are many who have been deceived and have come up with their own thoughts and beliefs about who Jesus is. You know, there, and I'm sure you have heard of some of the things that people have come up with. There are those who have said that Jesus, he was just a historical figure. He was just another guy who lived long ago who accomplished good things. That he was just an ancient philosopher and he was an, a, a good thinker. That he was just an... Um, Influential, an influential social reformer, what a lot of people have said about him, or that he was just one of the many gods. That's who, that's who he was. 
or just another prophet. Or some have even said that he was just a madman, that he was an imposter, and that he claimed to be God. Others say that he was just someone who didn't even exist at all. Not only are those who have this not only are those who have this corrupt view concerning Christ, but there are even some who even claim to be Christ themselves. There was a man who lived in Australia not too long ago who claimed to be Christ. He claimed to remember being upon the cross. He claimed that his wife was Mary Magdalene. But Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, verse 8, many will come claiming to be the Christ. And so he warns us of this. If a person says that Jesus was just a then already they're pushing him away. If you were to ask someone this question, who do you say Jesus is? And they start off, he was just a... Mm -hmm. Then when you presented Christ to them, they they push him, they're pushing him away and they refuse to see him as he really is and who he is. False teachers will not be able to help us on the day of judgment. Amen. Neither can Satan help us on the day of judgment if that is who people choose to serve and obey because they themselves will be, will be judged as well. It is the one who is the mediator who can help us. It is the one who intercedes for us. It is the one who can help us and that is Jesus Christ. In our text, Peter said in Matthew 16, 15, he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He did not say, I think that you are the Christ. He did not say you might be the Christ. He didn't even say he might, he could be the Christ. He said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was given to Peter by God to see this and proclaim this truth about Christ. The next uh, verse number 17 of Matthew 16, verse 17, it says, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. For us, like Peter, it was not our own smarts, it was not our own understanding. Yeah. It, was not our, it wasn't something that just popped into our head and we thought, he's the Christ. But it was something that God had revealed to us. And he did this through the gospel. Through the gospel, we're able to see, as the gospel proclaims, who Christ is. Without the gospel, we are not able to clearly see who Jesus is, that he was the Christ, because the gospel proclaims that, the gospel makes it clear. The gospel is like a magnifying glass, and we are able to get a closer look at to, at to, and it makes it clear to us, and clear to us who Jesus is and who he was. The gospel the scripture says, Romans 1.16, it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. And so it's the gospel that helps us to see who Christ is and what he has done for us. Amen. When we read about it, speaking of the gospel, when we hear about it, we hear and read about God's eternal purpose and what he did through Christ and what he is doing through Christ. It also tells us who Jesus is and what he has done and what he's even doing 
now. Amen. The gospel declares this great truth about Jesus that he is the Christ. Christ, speaking of the word Christ as we know, means the anointed one. Christ is the anointed one of God. In the scriptures, men were anointed by literally having a sacred oil poured upon their heads. And it was to, um, it was to show that God had chosen them for a specific purpose, that he had chosen them for a specific task mm -hmm. and a specific work. Yes. Mm -hmm. We know of David, just uh, thinking of David who was anointed, and Aaron who was anointed, and other men who were anointed and who were chosen for a specific work to do. Jesus, he is called the Christ because he is the anointed one of God and God had a work for him to do. He had a work for him to accomplish. And this work was something that you and I could not do. Yeah. Even though sometimes at one time we had tried, but we failed and we had failed. But praise God that Jesus was successful yeah. at accomplishing this work. Amen. John chapter 17 verse number 4 tells us that he completed the work that God had given him to do. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. What did he do? John chapter 1 verse number 29 says that he took away the sin of the world. Uh -huh. Galatians 1 4 says he delivered us from this present world. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 2.14 says he destroyed the devil. Yeah. Colossians 2.15, he spoiled principalities and powers. Uh -huh. yeah. 2 Corinthians 5.21, he was made sin for us. Mm. Isaiah 52.4-6, he died a sacrificial death for us. Amen. He took our place. Yeah. Isaiah 52, 11, he satisfied God. Amen. These things had to be done for men to come to God. Yes, amen. For men to be saved. Amen. And there and there were other things as well. These were just some that I had picked, but there were many other things that Jesus had accomplished as well. But these things had to be done for us to be able to come to God. These are the things that God, that, that Jesus had accomplished. And these are some of the reasons that I have come to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Because no other person, no other God, with a small g, no other one can be able to do these things that Jesus had did. There was no other one who could take away sin. There was no other one who could deliver us from this present world. There was no other one who could destroy the devil. There was no other one who could spoil principalities and powers. There was no other one who could be made sin for us. There was no other one who could take our place but it was Christ who satisfied God. Amen. Amen. These, th these things have helped me to see and come to the conclusion that it's not all about me, but it's all about God and it's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a truth that touches my heart every time that I think about it and ponder about it and meditate upon it. This truth that Jesus satisfied God. This touches me because this is something that I tried most of my life to do on my own. And time and time I have failed concerning it. But what good news to hear that Jesus accomplished that. 
that he satisfied God. Amen. It is only in Jesus that I am pleasing to him, to God. And he did this by giving and offering himself to God, the one who was sinless, who was blameless, and who was spotless, offered himself for me. But one day we will see him. One day he will come. One day we will see the one who is sitting at the right hand of God and the one who is reigning. Amen. When every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. One day we will see him face to face. There's a song that I immediately thought of that says face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. Face to face shall I behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Amen. Amen.